Okay, we're going to give this another shot here. Um, what I've got here is uh, three different, what I'm calling handheld controllers. Uh, this is my original one. This is the next generation. And this is my latest one with the joystick. But the they basically all operate on the same uh, device. I'm using a, well, let's see, in this case here, I'm using uh, Polulo's uh, Mini Maestro. Actually, I think it's the Micro Maestro six channel uh, servo controller. And I think same with this one here. Uh, the difference between the first generation, the one in the blue box and this one here, is that I went from rotary potentiometers which are inputs to the Maestro uh, servo controller I went from rotary potentiometers in this case to sliders I don't know if you can see them very well but they basically allow me to adjust the inputs to that device and I do have a, a rotary potentiometer on the side so this is the one, this one on the side was for my uh, steering. If I was using a um, transom mounted uh, setup with my thrusters position um, changed by a servo motor. I guess that's uh, active vectoring. And, or, and I could, if I had two servos connected to that, I could use these sliders to adjust the speed of those servos. I could gang them together. All this stuff up here just has to do with measuring current. Uh, or if I'm doing what I call passive vectoring, which is my outrigger style, then um, I can use these sliders here to adjust the speed and direction of each one of the thrusters that sits on either side of my kayak. And it's our outrigger style. Uh, and so by adjusting the speed and direction I can uh, make the boat go forward, backwards, and turn around on time. But I really wanted to take this to the next level and so now what I've got is a, uh, a joystick that does all that. Now this box here with the joystick, this one here uh, with the uh, with this uh, linear or sliding potentiometer, it's actually my old style. Uh, they all connect to my latest version of my, what I call my battery box and controller. And uh, so I have a 25 amp hour lithium battery here, uh, a whole bunch of electronics, but it's pretty basic. Really what I'm doing here is I'm taking inputs from those handhold controllers which comes in through a RJ45 underneath that cap and it controls these two ESCs and each one of those in turn goes to one thruster and another. This connection here is uh, if I'm using a uh, servo steering on the tiller. I use that connection. That goes to my uh, fish finder, depth finder. And this one here is more control circuit so I can operate a kill switch and measure current. So back here again, I'm focused primarily on my joystick setup. I don't know if you can see this, but this joystick has, it's actually uh, three axes. So I have X, Y, and then I can turn this and I have a Z axis. And I have a push button on top. Now how that all works, and this is where it gets interesting. Um, what you can see, hopefully what you can see here, is I have some inputs which are the first four lines and uh, then I have some outputs which are six, seven, eight and uh, when I 
push my joystick forward, the thrusters um, will push the boat forward, let go of it, it goes back to zero. Conversely, if I pull those all the way back, if I'm lined up, I'll go full reverse. And then I've got the ability to do some rudimentary skid steering here. It's pretty cool. I can also uh, lock this in by use of the push button. You notice that the bottom uh, sliders didn't move uh, when I push the push button. Uh, you can see the push button being pushed uh, on the uh, run hold PB line. Uh, so now I can move this all, all I want and nothing's happening. The thrusters are locked into whatever my setting was before I hit the push button. Hit the push button again and now everything's back to uh, it's, it's live. It's run in run mode, not hold mode. Uh, I'm going to rotate the z-axis on the joystick so you just can see that. As I said, if I was using a transom tiller mount uh, with a servo, then this control would do the steering. But in any event, I get these things where I want them. I go and I'm headed on the course. The idea, anyway, is that once I do that, they stay locked in. So it works. I got to fiddle with my code a little bit more on the uh, on the Mini Maestro. It's a 12-channel, pretty amazing little device. I'm real happy with it. So we'll go from there and. Uh, I guess really the bottom line is I really need to get this thing out on the water.